ESPN NFL scribe Jeremy Fowler wrote about Bill Belichick recently, along with Don Venata um, on ESPN. We'll get to the draft in a moment, but uh, Jeremy joining us now here on The Fan. <laughs> Mr. Fowler, how are you? Hey, doing great. Thanks for having me. So Robert Kraft told Arthur Blank of the Falcons not to trust Bill Belichick. Why? Well, uh, he, you know, he basically relayed that he, he felt that uh, Belichick was untrustworthy, uh, as it was told to us. But that, that sort of had been a theme for a while. Um, you know, they, they had their run-ins. And, uh, you know, it was quoted in our story that, uh, you know, Robert Kraft has basically relayed privately that you'll never have a warm conversation with Bill Belichick. So even though they had great success together, and, and I don't think it was a situation – nor are we reporting that uh, Robert Kraft was, was purposely sabotaging uh, Bill Belichick's coaching uh, ability or, you know, his, his coaching prospects. But Arthur Blank, Falcons owner, and Robert Kraft are very close. They speak with candor. And when Kraft speaks with candor about Belichick, there's a certain tone involved. Well, I know a lot of people were upset about that and were trying to say that this is some sort of witch hunt and he's being blackballed. But isn't it? I, mean, I thought about this the moment he was let go there in New England. I said, he's not going to coach again. He's 72 years old. And is there anyone that thinks that Bill Belichick is easy to work with? The only reason, like, to me, like, you get away with it is because of the unprecedented success. But is there anyone that thinks that Bill's a great guy to work with? Well, a great guy to work with is probably relative, right? <laughs> I, I've talked to people who work with him who. Uh, I feel like he's probably misunderstood. You know, he's he's open to new ideas. They just have to be good ideas. And he is open to working with other people and probably would like the relief of having a personnel department with a true GM, which Atlanta had. So I think he was open with working with Falcons GM, Terry Fontenot. So, you know, there's some, <clears throat> there's some uh, layers there. But it's, you know, certainly he's not easy to work for. The Patriots way is sort of damaged. You know, it, it had four rough years. And... Uh, it, it was. It's not an easy place to play because a lot's demanded. It's not an easy place to coach. A lot's demanded, but uh, you know they really. It's in the name of finding results and winning, and that's really all Belichick cares about. So typically, with greatness in sports, we we like to ignore or whitewash flaws. You know, we say, well, yeah, he was he was tough, or he was he was uh, a hard ass, but oh man. <laughs> Six rings and, the, you know, the like you said, the Belichick way. With Belichick, though, it seems like it's the opposite, where we are ignoring how great he was, and he's now become this awful human who we just want to highlight how how destructive he was and like I, I don't I don't really understand why we're piling on Belichick so much. Was he just that bad? And can you detail why you think that is, you know, what we're doing with Belichick? Well, it's timing. It's the fact that he's coming off some, some really rough years. It's it's the offense that became a major issue late in his Patriots tenure. It's really uh, some of the personnel choices that, you know, probably speak to ego a little bit, like having Matt Patricia run your offense when he was a longtime defensive coach. Um which, you know, actually should be pointed out that the Patriots' offense in 2022 was better than 2023 when they had Bill <laughs> O'Brien. Um, but he just sort of became an easy target because it's easy to say, well, Tom Brady was such a catalyst for the success there. Uh, but that is short-sighted. History's going to remember him as arguably the greatest coach of all time. And, you know, just really I think it's a different conversation if he was 63 years old. Uh, but the fact that he's in his 70s made it difficult for teams. Yeah, I remember in the, in the piece you pointed out that you know, in order to to kind of have Bill in there, you kind of have to tear everything down and rebuild it Bill's way. And does anyone want to tear something down for what will probably be a, a, a two to three year run? Because you don't coach when you're seventy six years old. Yeah, and that's what teams are weighing. You know, I look at like the Chargers; they wanted um, Jim Harbaugh. They had zeroed in on him pretty early, but uh, they considered the Belichick wasn't going to be able to coach long-term and they wanted stability there for say a decade, you know, teams covered that. They don't like to make coaching changes, you know, so he needs to go somewhere where he can be a contender, you know, or where you got a couple years that he can try to get it done and get out, you know, like Philadelphia made a lot of sense that they were, were to have opened. They obviously held on to Nick Sirianni. He would have made some sense there. 
Uh, Dallas, same thing. If that opens next year, that could be an opening for him. You know, it's got to be the right fit. Do you think we'll see him coach again? I actually think there's a decent chance with it. You know, you're going to have a lot of teams or a lot of uh, franchises that could have a head coach opening that have a lot of history, and he values history. You know, like uh, Chicago comes to mind potentially, Dallas, a few others. Like, there could be some jobs that are attractive to him, and maybe a year away from the game will actually help and enhance his candidacy and his attractiveness. That's what I was going to say. I was, I, I was wondering, like, what would change? Because he wasn't close to any job. I mean, it sounded like, again, from your piece that, you know, people talk about the Atlanta job, but they said that he was not in anyone's top three in any of the decision makers in Atlanta. So if he wasn't really close to any job, what would really change uh, next year where an older Bill, who will be going into 74 years old, where someone decides that, that that's – that, which you don't see. I, I don't even know who the oldest coach in the history of the NFL is, but I'm guessing not many 74-year-olds get hired. Correct. It's going to be tricky. I mean, it's something you'd have to sell to your ownership and you'd have to have a plan for, you know, almost a succession plan. So, you know, that, that's an issue, certainly. But, you know, the man can coach and he's he works long hours and has pretty recently. It's not like he had lost his edge. Um, you know, so he's still got the ability to get it done. I think he's in relatively good shape. So there's certainly a, a team out there that could make it work for three or four years. Uh, this is ESPN's Jeremy Fowler with us here on The Fan. You have spoken with scouts and executives across the NFL. Can you outline how you think the uh, top three, four, or five quarterbacks, uh, what you know, who they are and in what order they'll go in the draft? Well, uh, I do think that Caleb Williams will be one. Jaden Daniels will be two. And I think there's a pretty good chance Drake May is the third pick. He seems to be the most coveted option. Maybe they can get wowed by a trade. You know, somebody can swoop in there and get him. But, uh, you know, that, that, that's sort of the feeling right now. And then J.J. McCarthy, the Michigan quarterback, would be sort of the wild card. Does he go four? Does he go 11 or 12? You know, there could be a lot shaken out there. So but that's the early sense right now. What do you hear? Like the McCarthy thing is interesting because going into the year, not much was was thought about him even being a first round pick. The numbers don't wow you, but you know you win a you win a championship at Michigan. You know sometimes doing stuff, sometimes you know handing the ball off. What is the is, is McCarthy a, a, a universal sort of pick, or is it more of a, a niche thing where a couple teams have fallen in love with him? Probably a niche thing. I mean, I think it it depends on what you value, you know, but he's, he's kind of considered a cup below those others for the most part. Kind of like a T he's not quite tier three, but he's kind of in between tier two and tier three. What are you right hearing? Behind Drake Mayer, so. what, what are you hearing most about uh, Bo Nix from scouts and front office people? Well, uh, certainly he has a chance to go in the first round. There's a chance that six quarterbacks go in round one, which would be first time since the early eighties. But, you know, he's, he's got that, Coach's son vibe that, that players, you know, coaches and players are going to love. You know, true gamer, athletic. Uh, he can throw it on time. You know, the, the issue I kept hearing from teams is that, you know, does he freeze up a little bit in big moments when, you know, the, the picture changes on the defense and you got to read the coverage and make a good decision. You know, sometimes he struggles with that. But certainly uh, a guy who seems to be catching on with some momentum a little bit leading into Thursday. What about Penix compared to Nix? Is is Penix more popular amongst the people you're talking with? I would say slightly. Uh, not much, though, but slightly. He's probably quarterback number five. That's my guess. Okay. And then Nix would be right behind him, but it's close. And what are they what, – what is the – well, I guess the positives – what are the positives and then the, the drawbacks of Penix? Well, I would say um, the drawbacks are age and injury, you know. He's going on 25 years old and, and has injuries uh, pretty much every year. But teams I talked to are mostly comfortable with that, with the injury part, you know. So uh, certainly he's a very skilled passer, maybe the best pure thrower in the entire draft uh, or close to it. So he's got a good chance to go round one. Jeremy Fowler, ESPN, we appreciate your time. Enjoy the draft. Thank you. Hey, hey time, guys. Appreciate it. All right, see you. Oh, Bill. I, Don't you I feel like people are piling on Bill. Yes, I do. It's really wild to me. I do think people because are piling Because usually on. with greatness, we just, like I was explaining, we just 
we we ignore all the bad. We're like, oh man, this guy was so great, and here's why. But yeah, he's a little heavy handed. But uh, but with Bell, it's it's like the opposite. It's yep. so odd. Yep. I, and I I said it when he got fired. I don't think he coaches again. I think it's a pipe dream next year. I just again for, go read that article. I think it's there. There's a there's a really well laid out case for why he didn't get hired. Everything from people not believing that he can work well with with others, and and it's one thing for to say. Oh, no, I I can change my ways. But if you've done one thing your entire life and you've done it really, really well and you are just a hard ass about it and you're now at 72, 73 years old, you know how hard it is for people to believe that you're actually going to change? Because you can say all you want that you're willing to work with someone until you actually have to work with someone. It's like when someone in the NBA says, I want to be coached hard. Remember when the Blazers were talking about that? No, no, no. We want to be coached hard. And then the first time someone does it, they're like, well, I don't like this. So between his age, the style, the fact that most people believe that he's only has he's only in to win 15 more games, get Shula's record, and then walk away. Uh, the last four years have been a disaster under him. I, I just think all of these reasons, I just think he's fallen out of favor. And whether it's Tom Landry or, or Pete Carroll, you know, I don't care who you are. Don Shula, it, it ends. At some point, you just can't do it anymore, and I, I just, I don't think that you will ever see Bill on the sidelines again. Well, it is true. I mean, Carroll's not getting another no. job. I mean, and he's about the same age. Yes, and had much more success in recent years, mm-hmm. and, and that's not weird to anybody. So no, and is more adaptive to change than than yeah. Bill is. But I, I, I do think Fowler's right when he says, you know, if he's sixty three years old, this is a different conversation. Exactly. But he's not. But he's not. He's like 73. And All right. I, just, I, I don't know. To me, in a league that's increasingly, when you look at the coaches that are being hired, who's the, the ones that people want? They want young, energetic, offensive-minded guys. Young, energetic, offensive-minded, I couldn't come up with three things that describe Bill less than those three things. So, I don't know. It just It feels like if I'm the Dallas Cowboys, I'm the Philadelphia Eagles, Hiring Bill just seems like a, a desperate, like, grasp at relevancy. Yeah, we're not good enough to win, but, well, a decade ago, Bill was really good in New England with Tom Brady and, and, and went on this run. So, what the hell? I'll just grab him with no other components to that Patriot organization, and, and let's just see where this goes. It just seems like a terrible idea to me.